Welcome back, you're watching NewsX and I'm Nidha Sharan. Now the Indian Space Research Organization is set to launch the country's heaviest communication satellite CMS-3. The launch is scheduled to take place from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. The CMS-3 is a multi-band military communication satellite also known as GSAT-7R and will be launched aboard the launch vehicle Mark III. The LVM-3 is India's most powerful rocket and is the nation's heaviest launch vehicle and can carry up to 4,000 kgs to space. It has successfully launched missions like Chandrayaan-3 to the moon, which made India the first country to land successfully near the lunar south pole. The designated LVM-M5 will be its fifth operational flight. The GSAT-7R is designed exclusively for the Indian Navy and will succeed the GSAT-7 Jukmini satellite launched in 2013. The satellite will significantly boost connectivity for the Navy. It will also provide higher capacity bandwidth, thus improving digital access to remote territories. This will aid both civilian agencies and help improve strategic applications. Well, now with this launch, India aims to enhance its maritime connectivity, boost disaster response capabilities, even in remote coastal locations, and, and reinforce its space independence in launching heavily indigenous made satellites. It has been specifically designed for the Indian Navy and will improve the secured communication for the defense sector. Now speaking of CMS-3 satellite, let's take a look at what exactly is the mission and the satellite itself. Now the satellite weighs about 4,410 kgs and is one of the heaviest to be launched from the Indian soil into what is called a geosynchronous transfer orbit. So what exactly is the CMS-3. It's a multi-band communication satellite designed to provide robust high throughput services across a wide oceanic region and the entire landmass. High throughput basically means the fact that it can process more and in the simplest terms it means it can process more data efficiently and quickly. So what exactly is the CMS-3? It approximately weighs about 4,440 kgs which is one of the heaviest the satellite is one of the heaviest to be launched from Indian soil into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. It will be launched into the geosynchronous transfer orbit as I had just mentioned aboard um, uh, something called the LVM-3 Mark V. Now the strategic importance of this launch is that it enhances India's satellite communication network and maritime connectivity. So one of the strategic importances of this launch is uh, in regards to India's maritime security. Secondly, it boosts disaster response capabilities across remote and coastal areas. So this will help, this launch of the satellite will help in boosting um, India's maritime uh, trade as well as reinforcing India's space independence in launching heavy duty satellites from its own soil. Now, the launch of this vehicle is very important for Atmanirbharta in space and defense as well. Now, launching this 4,400 kg satellite to the GTO from Indian territory marks a new technological benchmark to ISRO. As I said, it's a very key, key development in India's space research and it also prepares India for future satellite constellations and deep space communications. So it will help India in, uh, you know, preparing for future satellite constellations and particularly deep space communications. So it's, it's one of the most important and, you know, strategically important things for India and it's set to launch from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota in Arunachal Pradesh at 5, um, at around 5 p.m. And, you know, it's, it's, it enhances India's satellite communication network and maritime capabilities. Apart from that, 
the 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 SRO's fifth operational launch of the uh, vehicle Mark Three will launch, and this this satellite will provide services over a wide range of oceanic region. Now I am joined by former deputy director of ISRO, Dr. Venkateshwar Sharma. Good to have you, doctor. Good morning. My first question to you, obviously, is how significant is perhaps uh, this launch for ISRO and the Indian Navy, and also, most importantly, Atmanirbhar, Atmanirbharta, rather. Uh, well, uh, good morning uh, to you and uh, the billion uh, new sex uh, viewers. Uh, just to give you a uh, you know, history of uh, this particular type of satellite, uh, the existing satellite is the GSAT-7, what is called as Rukmini. Basically, this is for the maritime, that is the you know, um, ocean-based ship, uh, submarine, <coughs> boat, and connectivity to the land is what is envisaged in this particular type of application. In 2013, uh, GSAT-7 was launched with uh, VHF band, C band, uh, yes band and KV band, what we call as multi-spectral uh, geosynchronous satellite was launched, which uh, really served uh, the uh, nation in terms of uh, uh, the um, maritime uh, maritime uh, connectivity requirements in terms of audio, video, uh, visual, as well as uh, the emergency disaster management, etc. was uh, the satellite uh, which was estimated to be for seven years, that is 2013 to 2020 was its life, but it gave an extended life after 2024 and it is still serving now it is time to replace this particular satellite. Therefore, uh, the you know uh, CMS-03 has been planned, which is about 4,250 kg satellite. Again, it is a multi-spectral and uh, the latest technology adopted uh, satellite. Uh, please remember uh, the two, you know uh, GSAT-7 was 2,250 kg, and this present satellite is 4,250 4, kg with all the advanced communication systems, the data processing systems, and uh, control and guidance systems, and also. The expected life of this particular satellite is about 15 years. This is something which we should really note of. And for next 15 years, this satellite is expected to serve the Indian Navy, connecting uh, the ships, uh, the boats, and, uh, the, uh, and the submarines, as well as uh, the land connectivity in all the three uh, bands, namely C, VHF, um, S, and uh, KU band. And this is one of the crucial requirements in terms of the uh, maritime affairs of uh, the uh, country in terms of uh, the proper connectivity and also in the present given situation it is extremely important that we have our own uh, you know uh, requirement in terms of connectivity of the satellite and uh, to our own uh, defense systems namely army navy and the uh, air force therefore uh, the navy plays an impo extremely important role as two thirds of uh, the you know, the earth is water and also the, you know, uh, the, uh, the country is covered around uh, by two-thirds of uh, the country is covered by water. Therefore, the maritime surveillance, maritime affairs and maritime, uh, you know, uh, um, preparedness is extremely important. Therefore, this satellite forms one of the uh, most important and most required uh, Navy satellite. And as uh, it has been rightly announced by ISRO and by the government of India, it is going to really give an extended service for GSAT-7 which is uh, the uh, Rukmini satellite. And, uh, uh, and I think today uh, evening, 4 o'clock, is the launch. And uh, all the very best and all preparedness uh, for uh, the successful launch is envisaged. Sir, I want to understand from you in concrete terms, um, what, how will this enhance, the launch of the satellite enhance India's uh, defense capabilities? Uh, look, any defense capability, uh, it has uh, many uh, types of uh, services required from the space. One is the navigation service, where we have what is called as IRNSS, in Indian Remote Nav Navigation Satellite System, which provides a navigational support, which is something equivalent to the GPS. For uh, the wartime or for uh, the defense systems, we won't be able to use any other navigation system than our own, because Arthi Nirbhartha is important and our security is more, more, most important, and we can't have our security being played around by other agencies. Therefore, um, therefore, it is important that uh, we have our own navigation system where we have navigation system. Then we have communication satellites which are giving continuous con connectivity between uh, the land, air, and uh, sea can, uh, you know, uh, forces, uh, what we call it as Army, Navy, and Air Force. They are thoroughly connected by the communication satellites. And there are several Earth observation satellites where uh, the mapping and the location identification, etc., is uh, provided. 
and uh, more importantly, the present satellite, which is going to be uh, a Navy-based satellite, satellite for the Navy, which connects uh, the um, submarines, the ships and the boats and the land, and also the other forces, which is uh, really important that we connect all land, uh, you know, uh, land, air and uh, sea uh, forces in uh, the defense system, so that all the three uh, units of uh, the uh, Indian defense force cohesively to in, uh, together and also ensure that uh, the required uh, services are provided to the country from the point of view of uh, security and the safety. Um, all right, sir. Also, what um, strategic, uh, what strategic purpose, what strategic importance does this launch perhaps have for India and going forward? What more do you th do you think private space companies are also going to build on this? Look, uh, in the last twelve years or thirteen years, the types of uh, the policy changes which have been brought in by the uh, the uh, the existing government led by uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, in terms of opening up the space for uh, the uh, entire uh, the ecosystem creation where the private public partnerships are happening, where the, where the startups are happening. If you uh, go back uh, in 2012-13 time frame where we had only 100 or 200 uh, you know, startups, today we are talking about 2,000-2,500 startups and there is a budget of 1,000 crores. Therefore, the startups are also going to contribute in a large way in terms of Indian, uh, you know, commercial requirements, industry requirements, defense requirements, and space, aerospace, and uh, you know, strategic requirements is um, for sure. If you see that way, there are uh, you know uh, startups which are uh, which have started making uh, the rockets, uh, you know, the solid rocket, liquid rocket, or liquid rocket, or uh, the cryogenic rockets uh, are being uh, you know developed by many of the private agencies, and there are satellites made by you know, many of these uh, you know private agencies, the startups and the, the private public partnership type of thing. And also, if we also see many startups are coming out with the solution, the complete solution in terms of uh, uh, the imaging, in terms of data processing, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, the radar imaging type of uh, things, uh, they, uh, they are coming out. And more so, the very innovative method of, uh, you know, the ecosystem created by the government of India, where uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, separated R&D in terms of ISRO satellites, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, which would like, which should be doing the uh, you know, research, and then the in space, which is going, which is mm -hmm. making the policy making body, which has really come out and evolved many policies for uh, this ecosystem be, to be created. Then there is what is called as NSIL, which is supporting as a you know front end for ISRO in terms of uh, you know uh, creation of the industry so it's supporting the industry and also the supporting the private launch uh, sectors etc and also it, it has become a gener income generating resource nsil is the front end for generating income for uh, the government of india in large and isro in particular therefore if you see while isro was the only organization which was working on the space today we have hundreds and thousands of um, uh, you know startups industries and the ecosystems working for the uh, rockets, the satellites, the data processing, the image processing, and also the, providing the complete solution is something really very uh, encouraging. And I think if this trend continues, India, which is presently about 2% of the uh, you know, international GDP for uh, the, the space uh, sector, I'm sure the targeted, uh, the, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, who is targeting 15 to 20% of uh, the GDP of uh, the uh, the contribution of uh, the uh, space sector into the international level, I think I'm sure the 15 to 20 percent contribution can be there from this country, namely India, in particular ISRO and the ecosystem which has created uh, where many industries, startups, and uh, uh, the public sectors are contributing in, in a very wide way into this market. Over to you. All right, Dr. Venkateshwar Sharma, thank you for joining us with those details. Shifting focus now, a tragic incident unfolded at Nija Modi School in Jaipur's Mansarovar area when a sixth class student reportedly fell from the sixth floor of the building, leading to her death. 